Okay, lecture 18. Now when I can, I like to give you, since there's no time limit here, um, I can always break the lectures up into parts if I want to, I like to give you every possible example. Now the problem here, I'm going to do out every ionic compound, every variation I can think of. So there's lots of them. <laughs> Actually, uh, I'm not even sure how many there are here. It looks like close to 80. Uh, normally, if I make a mistake, I just start over, and and uh, so you you don't see very many mistakes here. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm going to take it slow, and if I make a mistake and catch it, I'm just going to say what the mistake was and go on. So just remember those ground rules so that you can have everything here. Uh, if you want it where everything is correct, I can do five of them, and I won't make a mistake. But here, I have 80 of them. They may be a mistake. And if there's uh, some mistakes I notice later, I'm just going to have an addendum lecture to this. So hopefully, uh, I didn't make any any big mistakes. So let's take a look here. So know these definitions. Here we go. I'm going to do out the formula or the name of, of all these different ionic compounds. So um, the, the formula for sodium chloride, well we have sodium, it's an ionic compound, so must be these. I'm going to go first explain out some of these and then I'm going to speed up. So it's NaCl. We have potassium and bromine here, so for ionic compounds, we name the, the first element, it, we give the full name, potassium, and then we change the end, it's bromine, we change it to bromide. And the rules are in the book, so you should be consulting the textbook as well. Lithium fluoride, Li is plus one, and fluoride, fluorine is minus one, so fluoride, LiF. The formula for rubidium iodide. Uh, that's what RBI, if you look at it, you'll find RB in uh, group 1A, and then iodine is in group 7A, so this must be plus, minus, so this is rubidium iodide. Magnesium is from group 2A, so it's plus 2, this is minus 1, so this must be MgF2. So this is a little quiz for you. I'm going to be explaining how I find these out as we go, but I mean, you know the rules, or you should know the rules. And uh, for this, to find the name from the formula, you really don't need to know the charges or anything. You just look at this as calcium, so we give it the full name. This is bromine, so bromide. The, the, uh, the numbers here, you can go from the name to the numbers by knowing the charges. So from the formula to the name, it's a little bit easier. Strontium iodide, well, strontium is R now, uh, SR, and it's in group 2A, plus, this is I minus, so uh, SR, I2. Formula for, well, we have barium, so you can write that down, and then chloride. And notice it's not dichloride. Uh, from the name, we can, we can work back with the charges to the formula. So in the ionic compounds, you never put... Uh, it's never monobarium dichloride. That's wrong. Wrong to do that. You, uh, you'll be marked off for that. So you just put in the names, uh, the first, the element that comes first, full name, second one, IDE. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, barium oxide, barium is plus two, oxygen is minus two, so this is BAO. Formula for MgS, that's magnesium, so you need to know your element symbols very well. S, so it's sulfide. Uh, formula for calcium selenide, selenium, so this would be, and selenium is in, from group uh, 6, so it's minus 2, plus 2. Calcium selenide, and I, I'm, uh, if I were doing the exam, I'd stick with some more basic ones, but it's not... It's not bad to push the envelope here. Uh, sodium and oxygen, so sodium oxide. And even if you're not writing these down as we go, you should be saying them out loud. I mean, it should be that simple to do, plus one, minus two. If it, if it isn't, then you have some work to do. If it is, prove it, do it. Uh, don't just watch me do this. Okay, plus one, minus two, so Li2S. Then we have potassium, uh, this is selenium, so this would be potassium Selenide, and we're moving fast, so if, I, if I'm below camera level, uh, I'll eventually move it up here. Aluminum bromide, aluminum is plus three, bromine is minus one, so AlBr3. And then we have uh, uh, almost the same thing here. We have aluminum uh, chloride. No need to put the tri there. 
because the charges tell us uh, how many chlorides there are per aluminum. For, for gallium, look, gallium is in group 3A, so this is plus 3. Oxygen is minus 2, so a little bit trickier. This is going to be Ga3, uh, Ga2, I should say, and O3. So it's 2 plus 3s, so that's a plus 6. 3 minus 2s, so that's a minus 6, so everything's good. And then we have aluminum. Aluminum shows up a lot because it's one of the few that has a plus 3 charge on it. And it's useful for some of the more complex names and formulas. So aluminum sulfide, formula for aluminum nitride, plus 3, minus 3, so ALN. Chromium uh, 3. Now, when we're dealing with transition elements, the transition metals, they we need when they're, they're in that central block of B uh, groups, then we need to use the Roman numerals. And it has to be written like this. Don't put a 3 in the middle there. Don't put uh, 3 lowercase i's. It has to be 3 capital I's for the Roman numeral. Or it's a plus 3. That tells us it's a plus 3. Chloride is always a minus 1. So this would be CrCl3. So just like aluminum, which is plus 3, we get the same ratio. But here, since it's a transition element, we need to be told what the charge is. Because chromium can be plus 2, can be plus 3, can be plus 4, plus 6. And so there's all kinds of possibilities there. So we need to, it's unlike aluminum, which is always plus 3. Chromium can be a lot of different things. Um, uh, and then the, the, uh, 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 the exceptions are silver. Is plus one, cadmium is plus two, and zinc is plus two. These are the exceptions. They're always, they're always those charges, even though they're transition elements. There's always exceptions. So everything else has more than one charge, but these three have their set charges. Plus one, plus two, and plus two. So we don't need to use the Roman numerals for them. Everybody else gets them. So the formula for MnO, okay, now we got to figure it out. Uh, oxygen is always minus 2, so manganese must be plus 2. So this, we call it manganese 2 oxide. Now, when I was learning this stuff, you always had to put uh, parentheses around the Roman numeral. And there's really no space here between the end of the word element name and the uh, Roman numeral. But I've been seeing lately where they're leaving out the parentheses. I, I still prefer it so they can see it. As soon as you look at it, uh, the name, like this one, boom, it's right there. You, you don't have to uh, search for it. But uh, if you don't put the parentheses, then that's becoming more common. Iron nitride. So first, you need we need to know that's plus 2. Iron, we need to know is uh, Fe. Three, uh, Fe. Uh, and then nitride is minus 3. So this is going to be... Fe3N2. So 3 plus 2's is a plus 6. 2 minus 3's is a minus 6. Uh, then we have, okay, uh, sulfur is minus 2. So this whole thing is minus 6. So this must be plus 3. So this would be iron and we have to put in iron. Iron is one of the transition elements so we have to put the, the uh, Parentheses there, the Roman numeral. Cobalt, that's a 2, so that's plus 2. Bromide is always minus 1, so this is C-O-B-R-2. Make sure that's a lowercase o. That's a capital, it would look like oxygen. So with cobalt, sometimes you have to be a little care more careful when you're, you're writing it out. All right, silver is a transition element, but we know it's always plus 1. So all we have to say is silver chloride. If you put a uh, Roman numeral here, it's wrong. Can't do that. It, it only has, we, we want to always go with the least amount of information that tells us everything about, uh, you know, be, uh, about the compound. So the most succinct way of writing it. Since silver is always plus one, it, putting a Roman numeral here would be uh, redundant. Same as putting sodium chloride and putting an, a one there. Copper, it's plus one. Selenide, minus two. So this would be Cu2Se. The formula for CD, that's cadmium. Though it's a transition element, it's one of the exceptions, so we don't put a Roman numeral. Mercury 1. Now, you should check the book. Mercury 1 is, is unusual. We'd say, well, it's mercury plus 1. But the plus 1 ion of mercury doesn't stand alone. They instantly form into a polyatomic ion. 
two mercury plus ones bond together into this form. So there's two of them, it's a plus two charge, so each one has a plus one charge on it. So it's unusual. But because of that, we have to write it as Hg2F2. No way around it, because that Hg plus, that plus one mercury always bonds with another one. But since each one is a plus one, it's still mercury one. We just have to know the rule here. Now, when we get to the polyatomic ions, and you see I've been setting up in a pattern where we do the simplest ones and we keep adding to it. Now we're into the polyatomic ions. NH4, as soon as you see that, you should know that you're dealing with NH4, the ammonium ion. And so this would be, I'll have to write it below here, ammonium, not ammonia, ammonium, and then it's I, ammonium iodide. Sodium cyanide, you need to know that that's CN minus. Sodium is plus one, so it's NaCN. The formula for, okay, this is, you have to recognize, and there's nothing else to be done but learn the, the names and um, the formulas for the polyatomic ions. So when you see CO3, you see carbonate. You don't see carbon and oxygen separate. And I will see iron two, or um, who knows what to put, but I'll see, I'll see iron, carbon ox trioxide as a name. That's, that's wrong. That doesn't, that's not the, the name of it. This is iron two. It's carbonate, uh, so it's minus two, so that's how we know that charge on the iron. And carbonate, so you need to know your polyatomic ions. And there's nothing to be done, there's no shortcut here. You have to just do enough of them that it becomes second nature. Now we have zinc hydrogen carbonate, HCO3 minus, that's right in the table. So this would be, now zinc is plus two, so we're gonna need two of these. So it'll be Zn HCO3 two fairly complex. And then we have this thing here. This is the acetate ion. It's minus one. And so nickel must be plus two because there's there's two of them. Don't forget that, sub, uh, that subscript there. So this would be nickel and it's a transition element. It's not one of the exceptions. So we need to put the, the um, Roman numeral nickel two acetate. Potassium is plus one. And it's K, and oxalate is C2O4 2 minus. So this would be K2C2O4. So someone seeing this for the first time would say, oh, that's a very complex looking weird thing, but it's it's just an ionic compound. There's a cation, there's an anion. It just turns out the anion happens to be very fairly uh, strange looking until you get to know these. Tungsten is W, and it's plus, that's a four, so plus four. Hypochlorite is ClO minus, so there's going to need, you're going to need four of these uh, for to balance out the charge on the tungsten. Then we have uh, vanadium, and then this is chlorite. This was hypochlorite. Now we have two oxygens here, so it's chlorite. So this is vanadium, and we need to know the charge. This is minus one, so this would be plus three chlorite. And as you'll see, I'm going through every polyatomic ion in the book. Rubidium, Rb plus chlorate, ClO3 minus. So ClO, ClO2, ClO3. So we have rubidium is plus one, so we only need one of the polyatomic ions there. The formula for niobium, um, oh, and then so we have, uh, this is perchlorate, and this is a six, so this is a minus one. So that means that the niobium has to be plus six. So niobium six, make sure you get the Roman numeral right. And then this is perchlorate. Formula for lithium dichromate. Lithium dichromate or chromate is, is Cr2072 minus. So we'll need two lithiums to balance it. And yeah, I am definitely speeding up, but I'm, uh, I'm trying to be mean, but you should know these rules, and you can always come back as you learn uh, more. Here we have the um, we have the permanganate, which is minus one, plus one. So this is silver, no Roman numeral, permanganate. The formula for aluminum nitrite, NO2 minus. This is aluminum, so Al NO2 three. Formula for, this is sodium, 
that OH is hydroxide. It's a polyatomic ion, hydroxide. Sodium peroxide. Peroxide is O2, 2 minus. So sodium is plus 1, so we'll have Na2O2. That's one where oxygen is actually a minus 1, but there's two of them together to form the peroxide ion, uh, polyatomic ion. This is magnesium phosphate. Cobalt 2 monohydrogen phosphate. That's the ion. So this would be COHPO4. And it seems like I'm doing a lot. As I said, sometimes I, if I can, I like to do out every, every th one that I can think of so that there's no question. You know, so when you get to the exam, there's not going to be anything you haven't seen or at least seen something like it. This is dihydrogen phosphate, H2PO4 minus 1. So this is um, dihydrogen phosphate. Sorry for the angle here. It's just an enormous name. Rubidium dihydrogen phosphate. Uh, then we have copper sulfite is SO3 2 minus. So this would be Cu2 SO3. The formula for we have zinc and we have sulfate. Zinc is plus 2, sulfate is 2 minus. So zinc. And remember, it's, even though it's a transition element, it uh, is one of the exceptions, so we don't have to put the Roman numeral because it only forms plus two. Then we have platinum hydrogen sulfite, HSO3 minus. And then uh, platinum is, is plus three, so we're going to need three of these hydrogen sulfites to balance that plus three charge. Formula for, and here is very important to recognize your uh, polyatomic ion, so this is potassium, hydrogen, sulfate, I'm sorry again for the angle, and then we have um, formula for manganese, 2-thiosulfate, thiosulfate is S2O3-2-, manganese 2 is this, so Mn S2 O3. Formula, oh, and I also wanted to put in, that's the end of the polyatomic ions, but I also wanted to put in, when it's on its own like this, that would be the carbonate ion. So I won't do this for all the polyatomic ions, but when there's a charge on it, you have to call it ion. So it's a carbonate. If there's an Na2, then it would be sodium carbonate, but it's on its own, so it's carbonate ion. Ion, always have to put that in there. Nitrate ion, or nitrite, NO2 minus. When you see that ion, that tells you, oh, it's on its own. It's floating around in solution, or what have you. So it tells you something about it. So that's why you have to put that on the end. If you just put carbonate, maybe you meant it as a classification of different compounds like sodium and potassium carbonate. But if you put ion, everybody knows. Okay. Then we have the formula for SO4 2 minus. Yeah, sulfate. Oops. Sulfate ion. Formula for perchlorate ion. ClO4 minus. Oh, I'm not sure why I did it that way, but there you go. And that is the deal.